this video, I'm going to show you how to search engine optimize your web page so you can rank for the keywords you choose and attract more traffic from Google. Just so you know who's teaching you, my name is Mike Mindell and I am the CEO and founder of wordtracker.com, the popular keyword research tool. Everything I'm about to show you is white hat and straight to the point. So sit back and let's begin. Take a look at this image. No, we haven't gone mad at Word Tracker. Each of these letters in bold stands for the steps you need to take to SEO your page. The caption reads, the mad hatter is definitely rather loony. Something you'll remember. T is for title tag. M is for meta description and keywords tag. H is for header tags. I is for image file names and alt tags. D is for diverse keywords. R is for relevancy and L is for reputable links. That's everything you need to know to SEO your page. So now, let's go through each of them. T is for title tag. The title tag is one of the most important factors for ranking highly in the search engines because it tells Google what your page is about. Let's work through some do's and don'ts. Focus on a primary and a secondary keyword for your page. Put your primary keyword at the beginning, and if you can work it in, put your secondary keyword at the end too, but in a different way like this. It's not a title, it's a headline. Make sure your title is compelling enough for the reader so you get click-throughs. What's the point of getting to number one if you don't get clicks? Your prospects are scanning the results, looking to find a match for the conversation in their heads. So make sure your offer is straight and to the point. If your titles are longer than eight to 10 words, then that scanning becomes more difficult and may be overlooked by the searchers. So as a rule of thumb, aim for eight to 10 words and 50 to 80 characters. Make sure your title tag is relevant to the content of your page. If the content is about oysters, don't then have a title tag that mentions Paris Hilton. Use a unique title for every web page, or your pages may be seen as duplicate content, and Google may not list you in its index. For punctuation, I recommend you use the pipe symbol or dash, and don't bother with anything else. Good examples of title tags include Online gardening tips, your guide to everything gardening. Mortgage rate, what is today's best mortgage rate? My wedding favors, dash, unique wedding favors, dash, bridal shower favors. Debbie has just sent me her first post for her new blog at North London Colonics. It's called Start Detoxing Now, It's Easier Than You Think. A quick look at the article tells me that it could do with some search engine optimization. So let's have a quick look at the free keywords tool to see the most popular search terms for detoxification. The thing is, the free keywords tool only allows you to search one keyword at a time. So I'm going to hop over to the full word tracker keyword tool so I can search for multiple keywords at once. Let's put in some detox variations. Detoxing, detoxify, detox, and detoxification. A quick search reveals the top keywords include detox, detox diet, detoxification, detox cleanse, body detox, detoxify, and detoxing. Ah, so detox is the most searched for variation followed by detoxification. I'll rewrite the title tag to put the primary keyword up front and take advantage of the extra traffic for the word detox, like this. I've selected detox as the primary keyword and detoxification as the secondary keyword. Notice that I haven't gone for a loose title like this. This would be optimizing for start your body and we're trying to get ranked for detox and detoxification. Now, this title tag will work fine for a blog post, but if I was optimizing for the homepage of the site, I would probably be tempted to go for a third keyword in the headline like this.
The home page will likely be the most linked to page on your site, and this allows you to rank for a third keyword without overdoing the optimization. M is for meta tags. We'll begin with the meta description tag. Google will tend to use your meta description tag when giving a summary of your site on its results page if it contains the search query. So use your primary keywords in the description, working in one or two secondary keywords if you can, but above all, appear natural. Length should be 25 to 30 words and about 160 to 180 characters total, including spaces. The description tag must make sense to a reader, reinforce the title tag, and provide more detail. It should contain a succinct version of your offer and a strong call to action. And as with the title tag, put your primary keyword near the front like this. From detox massage to heat treatment, colonic irrigation to diet and exercise, Deborah Lanyardo, Arch, shows you how to detoxify your body now. Click here for an introduction. Here's how the title and meta description look together. Doesn't this look like a listing you'd click on? Meta Keyword Tag The meta keyword tag is not very important nowadays, so it's not really worth much of your time. I suggest you stick your primary and secondary keywords in there with a few variations. No more than 7 to 10 relevant keywords, or you'll look like your keyword stuffing. And make sure you have different meta keywords, and meta description for that matter, for every page you optimise. Here's what a good meta keyword tag looks like for Debbie's blog post that I'm working on. H is for heading tags, H1, H2 and H3. Use one H1 heading tag for your page, no more. Use your primary keyword in your H1 tag if you can. The H1 heading tag doesn't need to be as SEO focused as your title tag and is usually the title of the content in the page. Here's my advice. I recommend you write great headlines for content like articles or blog posts which makes people want to read the rest of your story. Then, try and work in your primary and secondary keywords. If you can get your primary keyword at the start, do that. If not, don't worry about it. For Debbie's post, this H1 tag is just fine. Detox your body now, it's easier than you think. H2 and H3 are subheadings. Don't stuff keywords. So working through Debbie's post, instead of the H2 heading that says massage, I'm going to put in something with a benefit and a secondary keyword toxins, which is closely related to detox. And for heat treatments, I'll change that to heat treatments help transfer toxins to your bloodstream. You don't want to use sweat therapy, which you can see in the next paragraph, because there's no traffic for that search term. I'll also change the H2 heading healing and rebalancing the body to We're back to a variation of the primary keyword, which is detoxify, and the copy makes sense to the reader and to the search engine. Right, next. I is for image tags. Give all your images keyword-rich names, for example, fruit-and-vegetable-juices. Make sure your names are rich and diverse, not algae1, algae2. If you have an image that isn't relevant, for example, a logo or a background graphic, give it a number, like one or two. Google will ignore these images, and they won't influence what Google thinks your page is about. So I've gone to iStock Photo and found a representative image for the article that gets across the idea of a body detox. Here's my image tag, 
and notice that both the file name and the alt text is keyword rich. Alt text means alternative text and that is shown if a visitor cannot view the image. For example, if images are turned off in their browser or they're using a screen reader due to a visual impairment. The alt tag should be no more than 70 to 80 characters and should be a literal description of the image. You can create a caption as a paragraph below the image to describe what the image is for and then gently work in a secondary keyword without it looking unnatural as we've done here. D is for diversity. Use your primary keyword and several related keywords liberally throughout your text, but don't overdo it. The key is diversity. The more on-topic language you use, the more Google thinks you know what you're talking about and will regard you as an authority. Your copy must read and sound natural to a human reader above all else. This is a great use for the Word Tracker keyword tool, as you can find plenty of on-topic language with search volume to work into your page. See how this colonic hydrotherapy section uses the words colonic hydrotherapy, colonic irrigation, detoxification and bowel wall in a natural way that makes sense to the reader? Here's an example of where it went horribly wrong. Look how many times the words cheap bottled water has been worked into that paragraph. What do you think a human reviewer from Google is going to think when he sees that? Spam, right? You don't want to do that or you'll be removed from Google's index. R is for relevancy. Google rewards you if you're relevant, and you're relevant when you put relevant stuff on a web page. Ask yourself, if someone searched for this keyword and came to my page, would they find it relevant to their search and stick around? You see, Google monitors how long visitors stick around for. So if the answer to the above question is yes, then you're doing a great job. Now, Debbie's post is quite long, but it's 100% relevant to the subject of detoxing your body. A rough rule of thumb is that a blog post only needs to be between 400 to 600 words, but Debbie's enthusiasm for the subject shines through and this post contains some excellent natural keyword rich copy, so I've left the length alone. She'll also probably start ranking well for hundreds of long tail keywords, combinations of her target keywords that we can't even think of, which is a win because it means more traffic. L is for reputable links. You're reputable when other people link to you from relevant, related and reputable websites. But the first thing is to look reputable yourself, which means make sure you have quality content that adds value to your readers. Quality content means a higher chance of getting decent links, which is the most important step in SEO, even more important than everything we've discussed already. Now, link building is a big subject and there are numerous tactics that you can use, but the idea is to get an inbound link to your page. Google and other search engines will see a link from another website to your page as a vote by that website for you. If another website thinks your page is worth linking to, then Google will notice it too and then come and crawl your site. Here are a couple of quick, simple tactics you can use for any page to get your first link. First, social bookmark your page on social networks like Twitter and Dig, where your valuable content should attract some initial links from a few interested parties. That takes just a couple of minutes. A second useful tactic is to add value to someone else's related content, for example, in a forum post or a blog post. Now that Debbie has written her blog post, the next step is to find some related blogs who are already discussing the issue. So head over to Google and do a search for Body Detoxed with this text, which you'll find will get you blogs that allow you to post comments. 
I found a post called Natural Ways to Detox Your System After Chemotherapy or Radiation. Read the post and the comments. Then add your own comment that adds to the discussion. Remember, you must always add value, even in comments. Do you see how Britta has done exactly that when she says, check out our post on coping with metal taste? And there's even a comment from Lucille thanking her for the post. Next time, it might be a good idea for Debbie to look for questions in blog comments and write a post specifically to answer them so that the link fits. A final point about anchor text. Getting your keywords into the anchor text of the link is the best SEO you can do. Don't link with the text, click here. Instead, use linking text which contains the keywords you want to rank for, like this. Do you see how detox your body now is inside the link text? We want to rank for detox and detox your body, so that's what goes in the linking text. Finally, to look more reputable, I'd recommend you don't use a scraggy and disheveled URL like this. Instead, make sure your page name is neat, trim and descriptive, like this. Our primary keyword is right at the beginning of the page name, which has both a slight SEO benefit and will make it easier for you to attract relevant links. So here's a quick recap. Remember the Mad Hatter and his cups of tea? The Mad Hatter is definitely rather loony. This is a quick reminder of how you SEO a web page. T for title tag, M for meta tags, H for header tags, I for images, D for diverse keywords, R for relevancy, and L for reputable links. The Mad Hatter is definitely rather loony. And if there's one final tip I can give you, it's this. Don't stress about SEO. Lightly implement this method and then forget about SEO and instead focus on delivering value to your readers. Too much focus on SEO means you won't be able to make the connection with your readers. But writing great content that adds value to their lives will help make that connection and bring you the traffic you need. I hope you found this quick guide on how to SEO your webpage helpful. Why not sign up for your risk-free trial of WordTracker at wordtracker.com slash trial or click the link below. Then enter your details and you'll be able to use WordTracker for seven days free of charge. You can use the one click cancel button at any time during your seven day trial period or you can continue your membership for just $59 a month. Your seven day risk-free trial will also include these free bonuses. First, our seven profit from keywords videos. Then, a free keywords basics ebook, which is the perfect introduction to keyword research. And finally, a free keyword starter webinar, which will handhold you through the process of using the Word Tracker keyword tool. So now you've got the information to get going. What are you waiting for? Sign up to Word Tracker so you can start getting traffic from Google right away. Hey.